morning. And happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms, soon to be moms, yes. future moms, yes. everything. Everything, everyone who has a mom, we're celebrating you today. We're actually all being joined by our other two campuses right now. Yes, so shout out to Grove Town. Yes, South, South Augusta. Augusta. Celebrating all the moms over there as well. We have a fantastic day planned. Yeah. Full of so many things. We're going to have a little bit of fun right now. And then oh. some just really special moments. So much service. fun and some sweet treats yes snack on after service that you don't have to make or clean up exactly that's so a good. dream right it's such a dream it really is honestly it really is it really is from experience <laughs> <laughs> you can relate to that well like i said we have so many things planned today but i know many of you may be here with your mothers today yeah we have child dedication happening at all so three special. campuses right now it's so special 35 children are getting dedicated wow. way to grow wonderful. the church guys i know <laughs> <laughs> i know so we're excited just to have that moment to dedicate these children and celebrate what yeah. that means. But that means a lot of families are here. A lot yes. of grandparents and aunts are coming to see this special Perfect moment. Day. And hopefully your mom maybe is sitting right next mm -hmm. to you. And so I know my mom's over at the South Augusta campus right now. Hi, Callie's mom. <laughs> love you. We love you so much. And so if you're sitting next to your mom, tell them what is your favorite thing about them? Okay, well, why don't you tell your mom since she's listening? Okay, well, one of my favorite things about my mom, I think right now in the season that we're in, I love where our relationship's at because Aww. I'm out of the house. And so she's, she is my parent. I'm always going to respect her. If she tells me to do something, you know, we're going to listen. But it's not that parenting telling me what to do relationship anymore. Yeah. She's my best friend. Aww. And so I love that I can pick up the phone and I can tell her what's going on in my day, what's going on in my life. Yeah. We just have that friendship relationship and it's just a special place to be. And that is so cool. And I yeah. love that. I think um, for sure sure especially um, you you need your mom right. you know and as you become a mom one day um, I know that as a mom of two young children I need my mom I'm yeah. not calling her to ask her how to make spaghetti anymore like <laughs> I did in college but I'm calling her to ask her questions you know she's like my 24-7 uh, nurse oh that's good I know moms have a lot of hats they do. You're the a taxi lot. driver, you're the chef. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're the counselor, teacher. Yes, definitely so counselor for yes. sure. Yes, like, definitely. she saved me a lot of money. I'm uh -huh. sure. A lot of times, a lot of boy drama. I know, Colin, right? Figuring out those situations. Moms, we love you. We yes. honor you. We make celebrate sure you. if you are here with your mom or a mom in your family, make sure you take a picture with them today. Yes, yes. We have so many photo spots yes. around our campuses. Mm -hmm. um, I love the theme butterflies. Butterflies? How fun Honestly, is that? like, I feel like it's kind of a hard theme to do really well, yes. and I think it was done so well. I agree. The tea party kind of butterfly so fun, yes. thing, and then after service, I mean, I've already had a treat, yeah. so I don't think we should tell them what it is, but right. it's I've already sweet. had I'm, it. You're, they're going to like it, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's delicious. It's, pretty a, un it's a universal everybody likes kind of thing, I Agreed. feel like. Agreed. Okay, so Everyone. take some pictures with your mom, with yeah. your family, and we're also continuing the series Life's Biggest Questions. Mm -hmm. Pastor Marty has a wonderful message. Whether you're a mom or not, I really yeah. believe this message is going to touch you and speak to you and he's answering the question what do kids need most yeah Ooh, besides goldfish and then goldfish. Not an I know I know they say <laughs> toys I mean if you ask a kid they probably like goldfish toys sucker yeah I know one of those things but us moms would probably answer differently right for I, sure so I'm I excited think I do. I'm excited to see what uh, what the Word of God says today right exactly and so um, as Mother's Day is here hopefully you got your mom a gift yes hopefully if not uh oh, it's, it's kind of open I mean, after this. Yeah, maybe grab some flowers if you didn't. Okay. But I also have the three top gifts okay. that a mom wants to receive, and you actually don't have to go purchase them from anywhere. All right, I so have, I make I have give some this. guesses because it's probably very similar to my wish list right now. All right, so I'm gonna say them, and then you tell me if they're accurate. Because you're okay. a mom, you can tell me if this is real. All right, all right. The number one gift a mom wants to receive is a nap. Yes, Lord. Um, maybe a couple it. naps. I receive it. Speak it out, Kelly. <laughs> I received that. Especially nap. a mom of two young children. Yes. Naps are. I, they very might not needed. be waking up in the middle of the night anymore, but I'm tired every night so I go to tired. bed. I know they wake you up early. Yes. I know you and Matthew, your husband said they don't even set an alarm clock. No. Why? Absolutely not. Your kids not. are your alarm clock. Unless I'm catching up. an early flight, no alarm necessary. It. Exactly. Okay, two other things. Second one is a meal that you don't have to cook. Yes. Ooh, how nice is that? You could provide that, husband. You go pick up some Amen. food. Maybe cook a meal today for your wife. And then the third one is help with chores. Yes. Doing laundry, doing Clean the up dishes. The meal. Clean up the meal. Clean up the meal. Right. <laughs> so what do you think? Those are pretty accurate. 
They are. And um, in the spirit of Mother's Day, I would like to share a quote that my son said Okay. on the way to church this morning. I knew I had to be live very soon, and I was driving quite quickly into the parking lot. Uh -huh. And when we get out, he decided to tell everyone on his way in, my mom drove 1,500 miles per hour. Oh, my goodness. And I said, yes, son. Happy Mother's Day. All right. Well, we're actually going to check in with a mom who had a similar experience getting their kids ready for church. Let's check in with her now. Hello and welcome to our Mother's Day Sunday special. So this is a story in which many of you can probably relate. You woke up thinking, this is gonna be a perfect day. My kids and husband will behave because it's my day. Surely everything will run smoothly as we wake up and get ready for church. But things took a drastic turn. My son woke up way earlier than necessary, leaving me a stinky surprise. I'm sure glad my husband never woke up through the crying. He certainly deserves that extra beauty sleep. As I reached for the diaper pail, I stepped right onto my son's Lego set. Although minor injuries were sustained, studies do show that stepping on Legos can actually cause more damage than stepping on shattered glass. But have no fear, this mother says to herself. It's Mother's Day and this family will show up for church, snapping the obligatory family photo for social media, proving of course that we made it. As my son laughs at mom on the ground, dad checks the monitor to see the chaos inside the nursery. Sources remind me, if there's one battle you don't want to fight, it's denying your son the chance to wear his fireman outfit to church. Sure, go for it, kid. Due to unforeseen circumstances, my husband is queuing up the online service. Hopefully, we'll make it in time to hear the message. Reporting live from the couch, Barkley Bishop, back to you. How's it going, Stevens Creek? Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Why don't you stand with us? We're gonna sing together. So glad you guys are here. Come on, everybody's hands together. Here we go.
may be seated. Well, good morning. My name is Marty Baker, and I want to welcome you to Stevens Creek Church. Uh, we're so glad you're here today. You are here on a very, very special day because this is the day that we bring children to the Lord in dedication. And I'll tell you, Stevens Creek, we have just been blessed with so many young families. Today, we'll be dedicating 35 babies to the Lord. I'll tell you, it's a... No doubt COVID has been a good season for us. <laughs> you know, when you bring your child to the Lord in dedication, you're following the footsteps of people uh, of faith in what they've done for hundreds, even thousands of years. In the Old Testament, we read of Hannah who prayed for a baby and God gave her a little Samuel. And what was her response? She brought Samuel to the temple in dedication. We go over the pages of the New Testament and Joseph and Mary brought baby Jesus to the temple to dedicate him. And so what you're doing today is what people of faith have done for a long, long time. And so your presence here is saying that, yes, we're going to raise this gift, this child in the faith and to, for that child, your child, to experience the love of Jesus in their lifetime. And so we're just so thankful and honored. And, you know, as a congregation, we have a responsibility that we're going to make a commitment to this, these families. That we're going to provide ministry. And that we're going to love these children as a part of our church family. And so today, we're here to ask God's blessing on you. So let's uh, introduce, this is little Cash. Now Cash is six weeks old and you would think but this could be his first time in church. He's already been to church twice. <laughs> and so no doubt the youngest here. And, and then uh, we have Elsie here in 20 months old, right? All right, <laughs> beautiful, hey girl. <laughs> then uh, Adelaide here, and Adelaide you're 20, what, a year, 12 months. A year, 12 months. Oh, that's right. You're smiling because everybody's looking. That's right. One year old. And then we've got Elliot. And Elliot, how old are you? 18 months. 18 months old. That's right. And then we've got Blakely here. And Blakely, I haven't even started preaching yet. And she's dozing <laughs> off. Some of you just at least wait till I get the joke out, and then you doze off, but she's already sacked out. And Brianna, and you're how old, Brianna? 20, 20 months. Okay. And then finally, um, Millie. Millie. We've got Miss Millie here. And Millie, you're like two years old? 17 months. 17 months. All right. And what a, what a blessing for uh, these parents to bring these children. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray over them. And then we're going to uh, anoint each one of them, okay? Father, I'm so thankful for this congregation, and I'm thankful for these uh, young parents, Lord, for their faith and for their desire to see their child or their children raised in the faith to follow Jesus. And so today, Lord, we bring these families, and we ask that you would bless them and that you would honor them today. So we lay hands on cash. And so, Father, we dedicate cash to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, buddy. 
Father, we are so thankful for Elsie here. And today we lay hands on you, Elsie, and we dedicate you to the Lord in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You're a sweet man, okay? <laughs> Father, we're so thankful for Adelaide. And Lord, this is a gift to this family. Today we lay hands on you. And we dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Father, we're so thankful for Elliot. And today, Lord, this congregation, we just gather and we lay hands on you, Elliot. We pray a blessing over you as we dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So sweet. God bless you, David. God bless you, Kathy. Father, we're so thankful for Blakely today. And today, we know that she is a gift. And we anoint you and we dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And Father, we're so thankful for Brianna. Today, Lord, we bring her to you. God, we ask that you'd place your hand on her as we dedicate her in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, sweetie. Father, we're so thankful for Millie. And Lord, I ask that you would just bless her today, that your presence would rest on her as we dedicate you, Millie, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's in the first service, we had all boys and one girl. In this service, we have all girls and one boy. It just takes girls longer to get ready. <laughs> I better, y'all better stand up. <laughs> Let's stand. God bless you. God bless you, Billy. Yeah. Well, over the next few minutes, we're going to sing a song of blessing over these families, but also over our families, that God would just show his favor over our kids and their kids. And that's our prayer today. So as we sing this, just allow it to come from your heart and lift up this prayer. The Lord bless you.
that is for us it's our prayer that you would come like only you can and that you would meet with each and every one of us no matter where we might be in our spiritual journey wherever we might be in our life journey right now and that you would allow us to know that you are for us God for those that are on the mountaintop today for those of those that might be weeping today, God, allow us to know that you're with us. God, I pray specifically for moms in this place. God, that you would just be with them today, that you would encourage them today, that you would bring them joy today, that you would give them strength, and that they would be honored. So God, we just love you and we praise you for all that you've done. Thank you for our moms. Thank you for what they mean to all of us. So we give you this day, we give you the rest of this time, and we praise you and we honor you, we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and everybody said, amen. Come on, let's just clap our hands one more time, celebrate what he's doing, amen. 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 Hey, you guys may be seated, thanks for singing with us and worshiping with us. What a great day so far. Well, my name's Todd, I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and we're so glad you're here today, and you know, if you've never been to, to Stevens Creek on Mother's Day, we, we think it's pretty special. And uh, so we hope you moms are feeling that way today, like you are special. Well, we like to, like to go all out and do a lot of different things. And so we thought it would be great if we gathered moms from all three of our campuses and we got them in the room and we just asked them what it means to them to be a mom. And so check this out. When I was really little, I wanted to be a pediatrician when I grew up. I wanted to be a teacher. 
I wanted to be a counselor. I think I wanted to be a flight attendant. <laughs> I wanted to be an actress. I knew I wanted to be a mom. Just being with them and seeing them grow from being babies to toddlers to preschool and you know just going through all those phases. In each phase, you're becoming a different type of person. Becoming a mom, I think, is one of those moments that nothing can prepare you for. Well, my story is not of the traditional sort. I was in a really low place in my life and my uh, partner and I had just um, separated and a month later I found out I was pregnant and it was not uh, what I think most people look forward to when they um, think about being coming a mom. I have a precious two and a half year old little girl named Sutton. Uh, we have two babies that we lost during pregnancy um, and I am currently pregnant with another little girl. I look back now at becoming a mom and it was the single greatest miracle I've ever seen and experienced. She was always a hard worker. She was a single mom with four children. She worked a couple of jobs, taught us very early on how to take care of each other. She had the most integrity, not only at work, but with friendships. She just led by example, and so I hope I'm doing the same thing because that's how I try to lead um, my own children. Not take any moment for granted, um, have my children in church, be a part of the things that they're a part of. Motherhood is like diving into a class five rapid and <laughs> riding all the way down with no life jacket. <laughs> it is exhilarating and amazing and terrifying all at the same time. And it's the best journey to be on. I would want Ava to know how much um, me and her dad love her and how much we um, you know, just cannot wait to see what she becomes when she grows up and how, um, you know, how the Lord may guide her. We are loved, that they are perfect the way God made them. Be everything that God has called you to be and do it not unto man, but pleasing unto Him. He is life. He is our joy and we are so thankful for Him. I want my kids to know how much I love them. I love them so, so much. There is no limit to how much I love you. You are our joy. You make us happy. You make us so proud. And I love you with my whole heart. I would want to tell all of my babies that my greatest desire for your life is that you would know the unconditional love of Jesus, um, that this world is broken. And you're likely going to experience that throughout your life. Um, but Jesus' love is not, and He loves you, and I know it has to be a whole bunch because it's more than I do, and that's more than my brain can even fathom, um, but that you are loved, and that my biggest desire and hope for your life is that you live it for His glory.
I love seeing these beautiful pictures that you all submitted and seeing how a mother in your life has shaped you and helped you become the person that you are today. So to all the moms out there, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for the mac and cheese, even though it was from a box. We love you and we don't know what we would do without you. Well, I just wanted to come up here and take a moment to say welcome to Stevens Creek Church. I know we have many families that are joining us today and I'm just so glad that you picked today to spend time with us. If you're hanging out with us for the very first time, we would love to connect with you. The easiest way that you can do that is by filling out a connect card, which you can find in the seat back in front of you, or simply text the word connect to 706-222-7123. We'll send you a short form to fill out. That way we can follow up with you and help you to take your next steps here at Stevens Creek Church. So next week, we have the opportunity to celebrate some people who have made the best decision of their life. And that is baptism. We are going to celebrate people who have made the decision to go public with their faith. And it is going to be an incredible time ac across all three campuses, across all of our services. We're going to have people that are going to be proclaiming Christ in their hearts to everyone. And I just wanna invite you to be a part of our baptism celebration next Sunday. Maybe you're sitting in here and considering maybe it's your turn to go public with your faith. I want you to sign up. You can do so by going to stevenscreekchurch.com on our events page. It's really simple. And maybe you are participating next week. We have a class for you during the noon service in our conference center. But we cannot wait to celebrate this decision with you next week.
Well, you guys have had such an incredible impact in the CSRA, and I just wanna say thank you. It is because of your generosity that the ministries here are able to be the hands and feet of Jesus in our area. You are impacting not only this generation, but generations to come. And I just want to say thank you. If you came prepared to bring your tithes and your offerings today, you can do so a number of ways. You can drop it in the bucket as you leave. You can text the word give to the number I just mentioned. You can go to the kiosk. But whatever the method, I just want to say thank you so much for being such a generous church. Well, before Pastor Marty comes up here to share a message with us, we are going to hear again from our Mother's Day correspondent, Barkley Bishop, and just check in and see how she's doing. Good morning. This is Barkley Bishop reporting live from outside of my son's Creek Kids class where I've put him in to be detained while I pray for his major attitude adjustment. So because the story involves a minor, details are limited, but I can confirm that my one-year-old son is anything but an all-star customer as he held me and my husband hostage this morning at Waffle House. Witnesses were several retired couples who thought they were showing up for a nice quiet breakfast, but that quickly changed. 20 seconds of the food arriving at his high chair, it apparently was not to the small human's liking, and soon the seemingly nice woman next to us had hair that was smothered, covered, and iced. Screams of Baba were not understood, and it was clear that even Coco Melon couldn't stop the mayhem that was unfolding inside of the otherwise quiet restaurants. Thanks to the busboy's quick thinking, my son was given a sippy cup of milk that apparently tasted better than any food he'd been offered, and the manager sent us on our way, reminding us that despite the long road ahead, we're all-star parents for thinking that a one-year-old could be contained at a restaurant. Next up, a special segment from Pastor Marty answering the question, what do kids need most? Back to you. Well, good morning and welcome to Stevens Creek Church. We're so glad that you're here today. What a beautiful day to be in church. I'd like to welcome all those in our South Campus. I'd like to welcome those in our Grove Town Campus and all those watching online. Today's Mother's Day and we're here to celebrate families uh, across our campuses and, and celebrate and encourage you. But you know, I like to start with something funny. Did you hear about the young mom that had three notorious little uh, th kids and somebody came up to her and says, you know, if you had it to do all over again, would you have children? And she said, well, definitely not the same ones. <laughs> I'll tell you, all of us feel like that at times. Uh, today, we're continuing our series called Life's Biggest Questions, and oftentimes when we find out a, uh, a young mom is pregnant and she's about to give birth, we say, well, what does the baby need? And we go and try to find that perfect baby gift. This past week, I was looking at Good Housekeeping magazine, like I always study that, but, um, and they listed out the top 10 things that a baby needs. Number one, if you're wondering, uh, they need fleece uh, booties, you know, because these are guaranteed not to come off their feet. Okay. Uh, in fact, that was so popular, even the New York Magazine did a story on those. I mean, come on. Um, and the second thing that every baby needs is a Gerber side snap shirt. The third thing is a personalized lovey. But what I noticed on the list is they didn't have something that I feel like every nursery needs. Every nursery needs one of these, a suitcase. And you need to put that suitcase right in that nursery so that when you go in, you're reminded that every day you're packing those bags. And one day, you're going to pack the bags for the last time, and they are going to leave. And so this is just a reminder that time is precious. The time is precious, and that suitcase reminds us of that. In Psalm chapter 90, Moses writes these words. He said, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days so that we can gain a heart of wisdom. You know, life goes so much faster than you can even imagine. Some of you this week says, man, I cannot believe we, this week's already passed and we're about to start a new week. 
That's how it is. The busier you are, the faster it seems like life goes. And if you're up to your elbows and in, in diaper changes and raising little toddlers, I'm telling you, your life is like warp speed. It is passing quickly. But let me say this. There's going to come a day when this season of your life with these young children will change. And we've got to make the most of, of every opportunity because it's going to change. For instance, let's imagine this. These are uh, two vases filled with marbles. On this vase right here, this vase has 1,000 marbles in it. Now, let's imagine that every one of these marbles represents one week. So when that baby is born and you hold that baby in its arms and you see all the babies that are dedicated today, that it's like that, that mom, that dad is given this vase of 1,000 marbles. Each of these marbles represent one week. Do you know that by the time that child goes to ninth grade, it looks like this, ninth grade. And some of you have eighth graders right now and in... Uh, Three months in August, they'll be in the ninth grade. And here's what it's going to look like. It's going to be, I'm talking about it's going to go fast. They're going to spend, they're going to go in the ninth grade with 200 marbles. Ten weeks in, they're just learning their combination to their locker. Ten weeks in, they're just trying to find their tribe. By 20 weeks, they finish the first semester and they go into uh, end of the semester exams and they're going to find out their GPA. And that GPA is probably going to determine what college they're going to go to or not go to. So we think about that. They go on through, and um, at 50 weeks, you're going to take that child to the DMV, and they're going to get their learner's permit. At, at 75 weeks, they're going to get their first job, and it's not going to save you one dime. <laughs> In fact, it's probably going to cost you money but you're just glad they're, they're working. You know, at a, 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 hundred, a hundred weeks, they're going to start their junior year. Some of them will start to have facial hair, and, with, and you'll say, who in the world are you? This is when they start dating in a car alone, and you figure out how strong your prayer life really is. At 130 weeks, they're going to take this SAT, and then they're probably going to take it again, and maybe even a third time or a fourth time. But then it comes to the point where they put on that cap and gown, and we're going to be uh, honoring graduates in two weeks. So if you haven't had signed your graduate up for that service, please do so. But you're going to see them put on that cap and gown, and they're going to walk across that stage, and you're going to lose all your marbles. Today's Mother's Day, and moms matter. But, and we're here just to encourage you and to inspire you uh, to be the best mom, to be the best parent ever. This is the big idea for today's talk. The big idea is this. As a parent, God has uniquely positioned you to be the most influential person in your child's life. As a parent, God has uniquely positioned you to be the most influential person in your, parent, in your child's life. If you're a dad, if you're a mom, if you're a grandmother, if you're a, a granddad, a great-grandma, a great-granddad, you had this unique opportunity to be an influence on these children. So what does a kid need most? When I think about that, I, I'd quickly rattle off several things. Oh, a kid needs a vibrant faith, and, and they need a stable home, and, and they need a strong work ethic, and they need an opportunity to make a difference. I could give you a list of things. But, but the question I ask, what does the child or the kid need most? What do they need most? Well, honestly, what they need most is for you to love them. They need love. And we hear that, but what does it really mean? We open the pages of the Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we start to read the verses of Scripture about love. And it says, love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. 
Love is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but love rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres because love never, never fails. So what do kids need most? Kids need for you to love them. Over the next few minutes, I want to just look at verse number seven and take a a deeper dive into just this one verse. Because I really believe that the principles in this one verse speaks to all of us as parents, maybe as partners, as spouses, as friends, as church members. Because we're called to be people who love. In fact, there's four things in this one verse that every kid needs. Needs to love. First of all, kids need you to build them up when others tear them down. The verse says love always protects. The word protects in the original language of the Bible means to cover with a roof. It implies that, that love is like a roof that covers and protects you. It, is, it becomes like a shelter in the storm. We all go through storms. And love becomes that shelter that protects us. If you're going to love somebody, you're going to protect them. If you're going to love somebody, if you're going to love your child, if you're going to love your spouse, if you're going to love your friend, you will provide protection for that person. How do you do that? I think you do everything you can to to minimize their hurt, uh, uh, to minimize their mistakes, to overlook their faults. In Proverbs chapter 10, it says, hatred stirs up conflict. But notice this, love covers. I said, love is like a covering. Love covers. Love covers all wrongs. Love washes out for people. If you're going to grow in a relationship, you've got to learn how to protect that person that you're in that relationship with. You've got to learn how to protect them. Because love has that ability to do that. None of us are perfect, and and nobody's claiming to be perfect here. And so... In, with that in mind, we have to acknowledge that none of us are perfect. All of us have flaws. All of us have made mistakes along the way. But what I discover in genuine, sincere love, love covers that. In fact, First Peter says this, love covers a multitude of sins, covers a multitude of mistakes. When we think about that covering of love, I think there's some practical applications to that. There's two things specifically. Love doesn't nitpick. You know, sometimes we have this tendency to just to nitpick, to, to highlight the negative thing. Love doesn't do that. Also, love doesn't criticize in public. So you're in public as your parents uh, with your children or maybe you're with your spouse. Don't criticize them. That's not for the public. Um, to deal with, but you deal with that one-on-one and you work through that. We've got to protect one another. This is the words of Psalm chapter 91. It says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him and I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. And so uh, that gives us an example. We, as people who are committed to loving each other, we're committed to protect one another. Love always protects. Secondly, it always trusts. Kids need you to trust them. Kids need you to give them the benefit of the doubt. The benefit of the doubt. Love always trusts. One of the ways that you trust people is that you give them a second chance when they make mistakes. All of us make mistakes. And so we just give them that second chance. You know, so many times we get into a place where we say, well, They've got, you've got to earn my trust back. And we want people to earn trust. Yeah, that, that works just a little bit. But what if you went into that relationship and said, I'm going to, you blew it, but I'm going to give you trust. I'm going to give it to you. 
You didn't, sure didn't earn it or deserve it, but I'm going to give you trust. I'm going to trust you. You know, so oftentimes that's what a football coach does. When a football uh, sees one of his players fumble the ball, oftentimes he'll put that player back out on the field, immediately give him the ball again. Because he didn't want that player to develop this phobia that the next time he gets the ball, he's going to drop the ball. All of us drop the ball at times, and I just want to encourage you to be that individual that offers and believes and gives second chances. It will mean all the, uh, make all the difference. Um, and you say, well, Marty said, I'm in a, this place where I just, they've broken all trust, and I just can't trust them anymore. There are times when we get to that place. What do you do in that case? When you can't trust them, you trust the Lord. You put your, this situation in the hands of the Lord and say, God, I am trusting you. You love this person more than I love this person. And I am trusting you to work out the details. And you have to do that oftentimes when relationships have been broken. Because we want to come and to do whatever we can to restore. Because you see, love, trust. The third thing says love always protects, it always trusts, always hopes. Here's the third thing your kids need. Kids need you to give them a vision of who they can become instead of a picture of who they are now. Always be pointing them uh, to a, a future. You're always hoping the best. You see, love is, is forward thinking. It's optimistic. Love's not stuck in the past, but always looking uh, hopeful and, and moving forward. And, and when you love somebody, you're speaking life into that person. You're raising up the value and you're, you're speaking hope into them. Said, yes, you can do this. You see, love doesn't tell it like it is. Love tells it like it could be. So people who love are people of vision. We give people vision. You start to set your children up for what they can accomplish. And this is so important because oftentimes our, our kids are going through seasons or going through middle school, um, those seasons where they never hear positive affirmation from their peers. And so they need so much more affirmation from parents and grandparents and and coaches and small group leaders. We need to build them up. The world works very uh, not, works nonstop trying to tear people down. But we're people who persevere, who hope. We, we are forward thinking. We have a vision that, yes, life can be better uh, in the days ahead than they have been in the past. And so we start to treat people like who we see them becoming, we treat people like we want them to become. Here's the fourth thing. It says, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Here's the point. Kids need you to believe in them and to keep showing up. To keep showing up. Love never gives up. Love perseveres. What I see in this is love, when you love somebody, you're giving them staying power, gives them the ability to keep on pressing on and keep on keeping on, that you're not going to uh, give up on them, that you're, when you love them, you're saying, I am refusing to quit. I am making a commitment to you. You see, love continues showing up. And you show love to that uh, person, whether you're a parent or grandparent or, or uh, maybe you're a friend or a small group leader. You show love by showing up. Your physical presence here means something to them. You show up. You show up for special occasions. You sh show up for school functions. You show up for, for weddings, and you show up for funerals. That's what love does. Love shows up. I'll never forget uh, this time last year, my mother passed, and, and we were in this auditorium, and people were coming in, and I looked, and I saw a cousin of mine that I hadn't seen in a long time, 
a really long time. He's uh, a little bit younger than I am. And I, I said, Jimmy, I cannot believe you're here that you came all the way. He looked at me and said, he said, Marty, that's what families do. Families show up. And I'm telling you, it spoke to me that he showed up. You communicate love to others when you show up for them. I'll never forget when I was just starting off in the ministry. I would go anywhere and everywhere to speak. Any little church that would invite me, I would, I would go there. And I never got to preach in churches like Stevens Creek, not at all. Uh, my, uh, the churches that I started off preaching, they were just small churches, often mountain churches, under-resourced communities, and struggling. And I was going through a, a season where uh, I'd been away from home for quite a while, several weeks. And I was at this small church that was so poor that the pastor and his wife had to fry chicken dinners on Thursday, and they sold chicken dinners just so they'd have enough money to keep the church open on the weekend. They invited the young guy in to have a youth revival uh, so uh, I could bring revival to the church. I'm telling you, by the end of that week, I needed revival. I'm the one, and I was just so discouraged uh, because I was carrying the weight of just how they're living, and I, I was lonely. And I was uh, feeling the financial pressure because I knew I was getting married in uh, a few months. And, and so by the time Sunday morning rolled around, I am really down and I've got to preach. And during this service, I looked up and I see my mom and my dad walk through uh, the doors of that mountain church. They had driven three hours to be there. And just their physical presence there encouraged me. They showed up. They demonstrated their love by just showing up. We often underestimate that power. We're always looking for the right words. Sometimes you don't need any words. Just show up. Just your presence. I call it the ministry of presence. Just being there for that special day, being there for that holiday, that birthday, that ball game, that shows you that shows that person that you simply care about them. God showed up for you. Did you know that? God showed up for you by sending Jesus to this earth. In fact, that's the message of John chapter 3 and verse 16. Some of you have memorized this through the years. For God so loved the world that he gave, he showed up, he gave his one and only son, that is Jesus, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We look at that verse, we quote that verse, but let's for a moment pause. And let's take out the word world. For God so loved the, and then have a blank right there. And in that blank, I want you in your mind to write down your name. Yes, your name. For God so loved, blank, write your name. For God so loved you that he gave. For God so loved you. God loves you and God has a plan for your life. God showed up for you and he'll continue to do that. Today's Mother's Day and we're celebrating. It's a big family day and today many of you will go out and eat at restaurants and you'll wait in long lines to do that. Some of you will have backyard Uh, barbecues and so forth. It's a family day. You're going to post pictures on Facebook and you're going to scroll uh, the posts on Facebook tonight and Instagram, and you're going to see a picture after picture of moms and their children. It's a day of celebration, but let me say this. It's not a day of celebration for everybody. There are some folks that have gone through a loss or a breakup or an illness, or a depression, or people that don't have any children, they would love to have kids, but they don't have kids, or there are some people that are longing for a relationship, and they don't have that relationship, or they're just sad for, they can't even put their finger on it. They're just sad today. And this becomes one of the most difficult times of the year. 
In fact, you may be home right now watching this service because you just couldn't bear the thought of walking into Stevens Creek Church today because it was just bring up too many memories that you just didn't want to go there. I appreciate you having the courage to tune in today. It's a tough day. I'll never forget the spring of 1986. We were coming up on Mother's Day. We were five months. It was five months after our first son died of a heart attack. And so I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this for Patty. Coming up on Mother's Day when she wants to be dedicating her baby on Mother's Day and her baby's not Our baby was not there. And I was feeling this, and we were broke. You know, we were in over our head with student loan debt and medical bills and all of that. But I wanted Patty to have a new dress. I just wanted her to have a new dress. I didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't tell her about it. I didn't tell anybody. I told the Lord about it. I just started praying, God, would you give my wife a new dress for Mother's Day. I think it was the Wednesday before Mother's Day. uh, There was a box that was dropped off at our house. We lived in Montclair. The box didn't have any name on it. Did not have a card or anything else. But she opened that box and there was a red dress in that box. And it was her size. It came from the old store. Some of you have been around Augusta a while. You'll know this. You'll remember J.B. White's. It came from J.B. White's. You know, it was more than a dress to me. It was more than a dress. It was was an answer prayer. That in one of the lowest points of our lives... That God, in his kindness, answered a prayer. And maybe you're here today, and the reason that God has ordered your footsteps to be in this auditorium and our South Campus and our Grovetown Campus, watching on a device somewhere, the, the reason is for this moment, for this reminder that we serve a God that answers prayer. That's what you need to hear today. That God answers prayer. And that you need to be reminded that God loves you. And he really does have a plan for your life. Over the next few minutes, I want to pray for you. And I just want to pray that that God touches you right where you are. Maybe you're at a place of great celebration or maybe you're not. But in this moment that you sense his presence where the Holy Spirit comes and rests upon you, that when you leave this experience, that you'll leave with that confidence and you'll leave with his love, that you'll leave with the, the, uh, the confidence knowing that I can get through this because I am not going through this alone, but God is with me. So what is it that you need? What is it that you need the Lord to do? How about those of you in Grovetown? What is it that God, uh, you need for God to do? How about those in South Campus? What is it that you need the Lord to do? I want you to think about that as we bow our heads, and I'm going to just pray a blessing over you, and I'm going to ask God to hear, to answer your prayers. Let's pray together. Father, I'm so thankful that we're in church today, and we can sense your presence. And Lord, families have gathered from all over this region to mark this cultural holiday, but also to open up the Bible and to hear a message from 1 Corinthians 13. I pray, God, that you would allow your love to cover people in our church, 
that God, you'd give us hope and you'd give us perseverance and that you would help us to trust and that you would protect us. God, I pray for divine protections over the protection over the families uh, represented here. God, I ask that you would push back the darkness. God, I ask that you would build literal hedges of protection around families. I pray, Father, that you'd give us strength when we're weak, that you'd give us healing when we're sick. I pray, God, that you would answer the prayers that we are offering up today. So come now. Breathe on us. Come now. Touch us. God, we receive what you have for us. Say that. Say, God, I receive what you have for me. I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. God bless you today. Our trust and our joy can be rooted in Christ. He has more love for us than we could ever imagine. So I just hope that you are encouraged by that message today. I encourage you to go and spread that message, to show love to those in your family, to those around you, to your neighbors, to your coworkers, that we allow the love of Christ to show through us. So we have several more moments of recognizing Mother's Day. I just want to encourage you as you leave today, grab a treat. We have some pedophores and some cheesecake available for you to enjoy. We also have several picture spots. We have one in the backyard by the amphitheater and, of course, one in the lobby and one on the front patio. We just want you to enjoy the time with your friends and family here at the creek today. But before you go, go, you know, sometimes motherhood can be just as much stress as joy, right? So we have Rhett Walker coming up to sing about what that may look like in our lives. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. That the world can't erase There ain't a single day I let go to waste I got that good news smile on my face Beep, beep, beating in my heart Gospel song rocking in my car A little light gonna get me through the dark I got that beep, beep, beep in my heart Like this All joy, no stress, no
church. We'll see you next weekend. Y'all have a great one.